Hey guys, Booligan with Booligan Shooting Sports here, taking a look at my latest 3D printed firearm, the CZ AR. Uh, my last two 3D printed firearms took off and people seemed to really like those, so figured I would do a quick follow-up video on this guy, which is the latest one that I did. If you recall, my previous two were a uh, 1022 receiver as well as an AR-15 pistol that was chambered in 22 using a CMMG kit. Um, this is a 32 ACP VZ61 Scorpion. Um, parts kits for these are pretty readily available still. You can find them on Gunbroker for about $300. That includes the barrel, the magazine, basically everything from the uh, CZ that you need. Now, this file, which is available through Deterrence Dispensed as well as Control Pew, you can find them. Um, this is called the CZAR, and it uses a VZ61 parts kit as well as a AR trigger group and safety mechanism. Um, the thing with building CZ, uh, the VZ61s, excuse me, um, they're all fully automatic from the factory. Uh, so you have to make some modifications. You have to get a semi-auto selector switch. You have to get a semi-auto receiver. And there's a couple little complications there. So in order to do a legal build, the easiest thing to do here is to have one that uses a simple semi-automatic uh, AR fire control group, which are readily available, usually, uh, when it's not pandemic times, and are very easy to work with. And you can also use binary triggers and things like that. And these do some pretty cool stuff with this. Um, but let's talk a little bit about the... Uh, file itself and some of the things that I use when I'm printing a firearm. get a lot of questions on the last two videos I posted. What printer do I use? I use an Ender 3 with just a few simple mods. A glass bed, an upgraded uh, filament tube, Bowden tube, as well as some upgraded bed springs and a metal extruder. There's a kit that you can purchase that has basically everything. Uh, but it's very inexpensive. The whole printing setup that I use costs about 220 bucks, maybe 250 on an expensive day. Um, and it just works really, really well. I have printed a lot, a lot of uh, things on it and it, it just, it, my machine is pretty well dialed in. Um, what do I print these out of? Most of the files that Deterrence Dispensed and Control Pew work with are really designed for PLA. So um, there's obviously different filaments that you can use to print. PLA is really the easiest to print with. It's the most accessible, but it's not necessarily the strongest. It's, it's strong in certain ways, but it's not very strong in other ways. So most of these things are designed with PLA or PLA plus in mind. Uh, so they'll have a little bit extra reinforcement where needed to help strengthen up where the material might be a little bit lacking. Obviously, if you're gonna get into designing your own stuff, you can do that and design it around whatever material you want. It's just, that's really the easiest one to work with. You don't need a special enclosure. Um, it doesn't put off noxious fumes. It's just super, super easy to work with. So this guy um, is using PLA Plus, which is a little bit stronger than normal PLA. Still very, very easy to print. Um, I took the CZAR file. There are two different variants, one that has a rail uh, for mounting an optic at the back and one that does not. I took the rail mounted one and I remixed it just a little bit. Instead of adding a uh, buffer tube for mounting a brace in the back, I got rid of kind of those mounts and added a pick rail at the back. That's kind of my thing. Um, I really like being able to add little braces like this guy that I've designed and printed and it just really, really works well. It's a very slick package, very slim line and everything just lines up really, really well. Um, so the receiver itself, as I said, is made out of PLA+. Plus. The grip on this is kind of interesting. Let's take a little bit of a look. The grip is made out of wood, 3D printed wood. There is actually, there are filaments out there that use wood powder. So it's like 20% wood powder, 80% PLA. And it is printable wood. You can sand this, you can stain it just like real wood. Um, it actually has kind of a cool texture to it because I had to print it with a really with a thicker nozzle. Um, but it works really, really well. This is included in the files that you can find for the CZAR. Um, it's an AR style grip. It just, it's shaped like a VZ61. It's got that correct vertical angle and the thing just looks really, really good. So 
how all of this comes together, it's super, super easy. The designer of these files made sure that the geometry on everything works. When you print this, there's a lot of supports. You have to clean up the supports. You have to redrill some of the holes a little bit just to make sure that everything is nice and tight. Um, but this actually comes together really, really well and gives you a really lightweight, this guy weighs under three pounds. It's like two and three quarter pounds as pictured um, and really easy to use. Um, again, not doing a range test video today with ammo prices being what they are. I do have some ammo for this, um, but with ammo prices being what they are, as well as so unrest and post-election craziness, the gun range is not a very good place to be right now here in Utah. It is packed. Um, and being in the middle of a pandemic and I have a new baby at home, not exactly a place I would love to go. Um, however, I really, really need to get out because I have about five projects that need to have some rounds thrown down range. Um, and I might just head out. It's cold. It's winter now. Might head out to the desert and do some good shooting out there. That way we're not competing for sound uh, with, you know, 100 other shooters on the range. But, um, yeah, this is it's just a cool, very cool little build. How the uh, VZ-61 works, for anybody that's not familiar with it, um, it obviously has an attachable magazine. This is the 20 round mag, shoots 32 ACP, or I think 765 Browning is what it's also called. Um, your charging handles are obnoxiously small. They're these little guys up top and you can't one hand it, you have to like two hand it and kind of do that. And then you're in business. Um, they eject from the top. You got a top ejection point there, which is pretty awesome. Um, your safety switch works great. The AR safety switch works fantastic. Um, and your trigger pull on this guy is just a normal mil spec trigger pull. Keep that pull so you can see the reset. Normal reset, and it's ready to shoot again. With this brace and this mount, it's actually a very comfortable setup. Um, I'm running just a cheap eBay RMR style red dot uh, because this thing is cheap and that's what I do. Um, and the height is kind of perfect on here and just ready to go. Really, this thing just came together extremely, extremely well. Um, you still have all of the normal features that you would have on a uh, VZ61, that little button right there you can use to lock the bolt back. Um, and then these do have a last round, bolt, uh, last round bolt hold open on an empty mag. That still works, this mag's empty. Um, but overall, it's, it's a really pretty simple build. And if you want to get into 3D printing firearms and go with something just a little bit more than a 22. So the previous videos that I've done have been on 22s. Uh, like I said, the 1022 and the AR-22. Um, easy, low risk builds because you're dealing with super low pressures and things like that. Um, this is a nice kind of step up from that. The All of the firing components, all of the important bits in this are all kept in the you know factory VZ-61 component. So the part that really is gonna take the abuse and is gonna take the, the wear and tear and is gonna take the risk of firing it is all steel and made from a factory. Um, what you're doing is just kind of printing and building the parts to hold all that and make sure that everything works appropriately. So um, a lot of the questions that I get asked are how long should these things run? I'm not designing these, and I can't stress that enough. I get asked for files a lot, and I'm like, I don't design this stuff. I, I make tweaks and changes, um, and in general, I don't release my files out to the public for a couple of different reasons. Um, the biggest one being, I can't just send them off to like Deterrence Dispense or Control Pew or any of those other guys. I can't just send it to them and say, hey, release these files. Um, because they want them in a specific format. They want original raw files, basically. And I use software that I can't export those anymore. You used to be able to, and then they changed it. I can't export those. So all I have are STLs, um, which is what I could use to print. But really, these guys want to have it be fully open source so that anybody else can modify them and change them as they want. Like I do. Like I modify and I change them a little bit. Um, so I get asked a lot, a lot 
some people ask me nicely, some people kind of call me an asshole for not sharing the files that I have edited. Um, and that's just kind of the way that it is, unfortunately. Like I said, I am not a distribution platform, I'm just a guy. Um, I would have to establish a distribution platform, I would have to establish bandwidth settings, I would have to establish all of that stuff. And then there is the questionable legal issue of this. Some of these people originally, in the past, in the early, early days, of uh, 3D uh, printed firearms, have gotten in trouble, have actually had cases brought against them for releasing files to the public under their true name and things like that. It's not hard to find my true name. It's just, it is what it is. So that's kind of one of the reasons why I don't. So I make this stuff available for me and I'm working off of files that are all readily available. Like I said, you want to print a CZAR, go find the files. It's really not hard. I've told you where to find it like three times and then kind of play with it. You know, see, do you want to run the normal buffer tube? Great. Do you want to add a pick mount at the back? There's options for that. Do you want to completely redesign it to something different? This is a great exercise for you to take some work that someone else has done and just kind of tweak it, you know, your own, your own way. Um, but these groups test these things. They have beta testers. They test them for thousands and thousands of rounds to identify any issues. And they bulk it up. They reinforce it. They get rid of stuff. They add stuff. And they just generally make a good, solid firearm. And that's what this is. Really, really, really like this thing. I think it is kind of awesome. Um, and the brace that I designed is going to work really well on here. So I'm excited to get this out to the range as well as everything else. Um, but yeah, there will be a lot of range videos here when things get a little bit less crazy, when I can get my hands on a little bit more ammo. I don't have an ammo sponsor. I don't have any sponsors, really. This channel costs me a good deal of money to run. Um, you know, I pay for these parts kits and things like that. Uh, nobody's paying me to do that. YouTube, I do have a monetized YouTube channel. Trust me, it does not pay the bills. Um, but obviously, I appreciate all of you guys watching. I appreciate everything that you guys do to support the channel. Um, really that's why I do it. I like to build cool stuff. I like to show you guys how to build cool stuff and uh, hopefully inspire you to do some interesting things with your time and skills. Um, but stay tuned. Like I said, when things get a little bit less crazy, we'll get out to the range and we will uh, we'll shoot everything, including one of my new firearms that my tax stamp cleared on it and I finished my machine work on it. I just have to do just a little bit of tweaking but an integrally suppressed 45 ACP bolt action rifle. That'll be a good one at the range, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching.